How you doing, fam bam? This is Chris Mizo here. I got some really exciting news on Intel's 14th generation chipset processor that will be soon released. Are you excited for it yourself? Yes, no, maybe so? Well, I'm gonna tell you everything about it, everything that I know and what we hear from the leaks. First off, what we will talk about is Intel's Meteor Lake. As you know, or if you don't know, it will be in a brand new socket. It will be in LGA's 1700 socket no more. Instead, they're going to use LGA 1851. So it's going to be about an 8% increase in pins, just a small 151 pin increase over its predecessor. Sure, it doesn't sound that large, but when you look from the prior generation, when we went from the 11th generation to the 12th generation, it went to LGA 1200 to LGA 1700 with an increase of 500 pins. It may not be a big deal because what they're gonna be very focused on is almost a very similar feel to what you know from Intel's 12th generation and 13th generation. What they will do is they will create a hybrid processor similar as you know from Alder Lake and Raptor Lake. What they will use is called Crestmont Cove and they will also use Redwood Cove. They will also use Redwood Cove would be for their performance cores and Crestmont Cove would be for their efficiency cores. It's supposed to be a incremental increase of 15% when it comes to their efficiency cores. When it comes to Redwood's performance cores, you're supposed to see an upwards increase of up to 25% as Intel claims. Now, what the biggest difference is between these processors on their brand new architecture when it comes to their Z890 motherboards, which I will talk about. And if you're interested in learning all about that motherboard, it will be right above me in the card that will explain everything about Z890. But what do we know so far and what are the basics of the Z890? Well, Z890 will be very focused on DDR5 instead. There will be no more DDR4 hybrids. So that could be some bad news for people out there who are still holding on tightly for DDR4 for their dear life, which is understandable because it's still a performance monster. This doesn't seem safe. Yeah, I'm afraid I might. <laughs> but now it's time to move on and let DDR5 improve over time. Sure, the technology is not perfect, but it will improve. They will be also focusing on PCI Express 5.0. What I actually saw for the block diagram, it seems that it won't be too much of a difference when it comes to Meteor Lake, as it will only have eight lanes, eight X lanes for PCI Express 5. So it's not really a large difference from its predecessor. And another big thing about Meteor Lake is that it will be mostly focused more into laptops. What gives it really away is that there is uh, some indications out there it will be based on 65 watts, but Arrow Lake will be based on 125 watts, similar to AMD's 7000 series 3D chipsets, which are 120 watts. More than likely that will be the desktop processor, but Meteor Lake may somehow show up on desktop processors as it may come up as a big surprise. So what is really gonna be revolutionary when it comes to Intel's newest processor here? And what could we see that is really a big difference when it, you're coming from the 12th and 13th generation? And there has been some information that has been out there that's been since December of 2020, which are some patents on L4's adamantine. On a typical processor, you have up to L3 cache and then it goes into DDR memory. Now, when it comes to adamantine where they add L4 cache, instead it's gonna be a reserve for that cache for your system, which will increase better boot times and it will also increase the security of the actual processor and your system. It will focus on its integrated graphics and actually run as a computer on its own to really compete not more against AMD, but to compete more into the likes of the M1 chip from Apple.
自分の位置が分からずどこから来たかを忘れる。Talk about being bitter. Intel did not forget and they really want to show Apple that they can really push to the limit. So, what does that mean for everybody out there who really relies on Intel for their graphic designing, content creation, or even gaming? It's not going to be really a large difference on that scale, except you'll notice a big difference when it comes to boot times. Instead, because of the system reserve, whatever applications that you had open at the time, when you reboot your system, then it will actually still be stored in L4's cache at a man team. It will actually all be preloaded into that cache. Instead of actually rebooting the system completely, Where you actually have to load up the cache again in order for all the software to open up properly. It will also be connected to the integrated graphics, which will also be kind of similar to something like Infinity Cache when it comes to AMD, but that's theoretical. It won't be really focused on the L3 cache when it comes to the newer generation of Intel's processors. Instead, they will be more focused on when it comes to the L4 cache. Only problem that I see with Meteor Lake, more again, it's more of a laptop processor where it's more like the M1 Apple M1 chip where it's focused to do everything in one task. The only problem is when you do have processors such as Intel's processor or Apple's M1 chip, as soon as something goes haywire with that processor, that can lead into other issues to where the PC will not function correctly. Or the hardware will not function correctly unless Intel really has it refined. And again, this is nothing really new when it comes to Intel. Intel has done something similar to the past. It's nothing new when it comes to that. It's more of a cost effective way in order to produce a cheaper PC chipset. Another very interesting thing. Is the release date when it comes to Intel's processors? This year, they're not actually gonna really push for a 2023 release date for Intel's newest chipsets. Instead, they're gonna do a refresh of Raptor Lake chipsets, a more focused core count and frequency count. It's just gonna be a more refined version of the 13th gen processor, which is not really gonna be that much different. But Meteor Lake can show up a little bit earlier in laptops. Before it actually shows up into the desktop line. And will that be the case? Are they more focused on competition when it comes to the likes of Apple? As we know as well for Meteor Lake, instead it will be more focused on a smaller core count of 14 cores for six performance cores and eight efficiency cores. And then even if it goes bigger, then you're looking at a smaller core count as well for that. Price range wise, it's gonna likely stay the same. And competitive. It will be in the upwards mark of $649.99 USD when it first r e l e a s e unless they really push the whole markup when it comes to their processes as well, as little as up to 10% as we have enough price increases. I also do want to mention AMD also did a price cut when it came to their processors. Yes, they already gave a price cut. On X3D chipsets for the 7000 series. You can go ahead and purchase a 7950 X3D for $674.99 USD on Newegg. Now at Micro Center, you can purchase a 7900 X3D for $549.99 USD. I will have everything in the description box down below if you're interested in taking a purchase for any of them. Bam bam, guys, I hope you found this content very useful. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you know anybody else who is interested in PC and tech, make sure you share this video with them. And also, if you're not part of the big, wonderful fan band, make sure you go down and hit the subscribe button for more. And don't forget to hit the notification bell.、And、for all the newest updates, make sure you follow my Twitter handle right here, as it is the same as my TikTok and IG as well. So, fan bam, guys, if you got anything to add on that you want to talk about processors, Or anything that you want in these new processors, please share down in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Chris Mizo signing out.